what's going on everybody this is john jake gaming on for my cure coming at you with another alliteration of my 2023 nfl mock draft and just like in those previous two versions we are going to go just one round but we do have a couple of things that are different First and foremost, I am recording this on March 7th. This is the day after the conclusion of the NFL Combine, so we had to factor in that. And then we also had some major free agency news that dropped at the time. Derek Carr is now New Orleans Saint, and while we are waiting for something that could happen with Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson at the time, both of those players, they are still with the Packers and Ravens, respectively. So, what we are going to do, this is version number three of the NFL Mock Draft. And we are going to go with one round of how I think it's going to turn out. Because that's all that I can handle, according to my wife. And let's go ahead and dive into this NFL Mock Draft. I hope you guys are excited for it. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button. Hit that subscribe button if not only do you enjoy my mock drafts, but if you're a fan of college football gaming, this is certainly the channel for you as well. And of course, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section as well, if that tickles your pickle. And with that, I will not waste any more time. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the NFL draft. Now, this could or could not involve any trades. Well, you'll play it by ear, of course. But in particular, with the number one overall pink, the Chicago Bears, at least as of the recording of this video, they still hold possession of the number one pick as of right now. And what I do want to do is I want to treat this as a little bit of a thought experiment. What if the Bears do not trade from that number one pick? I think there's still a couple of options here, whether you go with Jalen Carter or Will Anderson Jr., but in the first couple of mocks, I did have Jalen Carter going number one to the Chicago Bears. But I will change that here. Will Anderson Jr., I think, will be the number one selection if the Bears remain with the first selection of the NFL draft. As he's a blue chip defensive player. He's a blue chip prospect for sure. But one thing that's also unique with Will Anderson Jr., what separates him from Jalen Carter, for example, is that... Will Anderson Jr. does not have the off-the-field issues that Jalen Carter has as he's dealing with reckless driving and racing charges as of right now, which will affect Jalen Carter's stock, and he's going to fall from that number one spot. Where he ends up going, we'll end up seeing what happens there, but number two pick, I will keep it the same, though. I still think Bryce Young is the quarterback one in this draft class, and what separates Bryce Young from C.J. Stroud is I think Bryce Young is a wo more willing scrambler, and I think he did answer some questions about his size. He did weigh in at above 200 pounds. That was a primary concern that teams had about Bryce Young. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. He's just a plain winner in general, and while I think CJ Stroud might have the better career, I do think Bryce Young has a little bit more upside to this point because of that athletic ability, so I'm going with Bryce Young still at number two. However, that being said, the Arizona Cardinals are picking at number three. And with Will Anderson now gone off the board, a primary need that they could have met by getting Will Anderson Jr., that's no longer available. But what I do know is, is that they still need a corner. You got to get some guys uh, to guard some wide receivers because there's some great wide receivers in the NFL. And I think we, in this case, we will end up seeing the biggest winner from both the NFL Combine as well as from the Jalen Carter news. I think Devin Witherspoon could go number three. I know his ADP is barely in the top 10 right now. He tested very well in the Combine. He's got the tape to back it up as well. Uh, so I'm going to go with Devin Witherspoon out of the University of Illinois going number three overall. However, with the Indianapolis Colts, they are still picking at number four as of right now. And I think CJ Stroud, I did talk about this with my Bryce Young analysis. CJ Stroud really solidified himself bare minimum as the quarterback too. He had some excellent throws. He throws a beautiful ball. And I'm sure that really excites NFL scouts. It really just confirms what I've known about him as I am, of course, an Ohio State fan. So it could be a little bit my bias coming out. 
I think there's a significant gap right now between CJ Stroud and, and Anthony Richardson slash Will Levis. So that being said, I'm going to disagree with PFF a little bit. Will Levis is ranked a little bit higher, but I think CJ Stroud makes a lot of sense for the Indianapolis Colts as they break their quarterback wheel, uh, going with veteran quarterbacks the last few years. However, the Seattle Seahawks are up next at that number five spot. And at number five, they definitely need some defensive linemen. There's a couple of options here. Jalen Carter, Tyree Wilson is in there as well. Tyree Wilson had a very good combine as well. He cements himself as a top 10 pick in my opinion. But I do think Jalen Carter makes a lot of sense at number five. And the reason why I say at number five, yes, he does have those off the field concerns with his current legal battles that he has going on right now. But why I didn't have him go to say uh, Arizona or Chicago is that none of those teams really do have an established team culture right now. They're both trying to build their identity still. But the Seattle Seahawks, they're in a unique situation because yes, they are picking in the top five, but this is the Denver Broncos pick, okay? This is uh, from that Russell Wilson trade and Seahawks early on, a big winner in that, by the way. And Jalen Carter, yes, he may have those concerns, but I think that team culture can handle that. And he's still a blue chip prospect in terms of on the field. So maybe it's a little bit of a risk for the Seattle Seahawks, but I think they would go ahead and take that gamble because Jalen Carter is a heck of a football player and I see him going to the Seattle Seahawks. Now for number six, number six they is the Detroit Lions up next. They definitely need some help on defense. You know, but the defense did play a little bit better, but you know, still a little bit of a work in progress. And for the Detroit Lions, what I have planned for them specifically, I think them get themselves a really good corner. Christian Gonzalez, he's got those lengthy arms. He has the ability to run pretty well and a very fluid runner here as well. And I think the Detroit Lions also uh, pick up Christian Gonzalez a little bit earlier than what I originally had for version number two. But I do think Christian Gonzalez makes a lot of sense for the Detroit Lions, who, by the way, used the first round pick that they got from the LA Rams in that Matt Stafford trade. So at number seven, we do have the Las Vegas Raiders as of right now. And previously for the Las Vegas Raiders, I did have Will Levis being mocked here because they do need a quarterback because they did end up releasing Derek Carr. And while they also have other needs such as offensive line and defensive back, I do think they address that quarterback position still. However, I don't think it's going to be Will Levis. I'm looking at Anthony Richardson. You guys have seen all the combine highlights, the 4-4-40, the 40-inch vertical. He does have a heck of an arm, so the upside is definitely there. And after what Anthony Richardson put together in the combine, I don't see how he's not quarterback free at this point. I was more impressed with Anthony Richardson than I was with Will Levis, even though they both have that bust potential, certainly. So Anthony Richardson, I will draft him to the Las Vegas Raiders because he's got that huge upside, man. And Las Vegas, they do love drafting athletes. And I think that makes a lot of sense because of that. Now for number eight, the Atlanta Falcons are still on the clock. And again, it says that they need a quarterback. I am going to disagree there. I don't think the Falcons go in a quarterback. They did mention that they are not interested in Lamar Jackson. And he's a former MVP, guys. He's only 26 years old as well. So that's a huge head scratcher. And that also tells me that they really do believe in Desmond Ritter and what he can bring to the table as a potential franchise quarterback. They think very highly of him if they're not even going to try to go after this MVP that is on the market essentially with the non-exclusive franchise tag. But that being said, they do have a few other needs as well. And I do think the Atlanta Falcons, they desperately need a pass rush. And I think they're going to go with Tyree Wilson from Texas Tank, one of the best edge rushers in this class in order to address that need. 
And of course, the Carolina Panthers are up next at number nine. The Carolina Panthers, they still need a quarterback. They need that quarterback of the future. They tried things with Sam Darnold. That didn't work. They tried things with Baker Mayfield as well. That did not work as well. So now it's time for him to look through the draft. And they do have a top 10 pick. There's still one top flight quarterback available is Will Levis. And while I'm not as impressed with him as I was with Anthony Richardson in the combine, as well as the lack of productivity that he had at the college level his senior year, part of that his fault, but also part of that because of the lack of talent around him playing in the SEC. I still think that Will Levis can be successful. He'll need some seasoning though, but I will have him go to the Carolina Panthers. After that though, we got the Philadelphia Eagles up next. They have the number 10 selection as they got this from the New Orleans Saints who could certainly use that right now. I think that for the Philadelphia Eagles, I think this is really the time for them to fully establish Migos. We've seen this model work out very well with the Cincinnati Bengals, who do have Jamar Chase, as well as T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And we've seen the success that they've had since those three started to play together constantly. And I think the Eagles emulate that. Gotta have a little bit more firepower. Can never have too much firepower in the NFL. So I think Quinton Johnson is the move right here. A big time wide receiver in the national championship game doesn't have those same health concerns that Jackson Smith and Jigba has so I'm gonna go with Quinn Johnson with the Philadelphia Eagles with the number 10 pick as for the number 11 selection the Tennessee Titans are up next and the Tennessee Titans we know they are badly in need of some offensive weapons right now and I do think at, at this point that finally does end up getting addressed a little bit so for the Tennessee Titans, I will go ahead and get them that wide receiver that could be big time since uh, A.J. Brown left the organization, uh, traded to the Philadelphia Eagles, ironically. And so I see them getting Jackson Smith and Jigma, finally get them somebody who can really be that thousand yard receiver in the NFL. The dude can play, even though he did not play very much last season. So now with the number 12 pick, this is actually the Houston Texans' second first round pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. We've seen them get Bryce Young with the number 2 overall selection. And now it's time for the Houston Texans to go ahead and start addressing that defensive side of the football. They definitely need some defensive linemen. And I can see Kalaja Kansi, who also tested pretty well at the NFL Combine. I see him really cement himself as a top 15 player. And with that, I'm going to go with Kalaja Kanzi with the number 13 overall selection. And he's also somebody that's got that quick twitch. He did have a very good 40. So, going to go with Kalaja Kanzi here. Now, for the New York Jets, they are at number 13. And while they do have quarterback listed, there is some rumors that... Aaron Rodgers might be going to the New York Jets via trade. That has not been cemented yet. But either way, I never had the New York Jets cemented as a team that's going to pick up a quarterback in the first round. I think they're a solid quarterback away from being a very dangerous threat in not only AFC North, but in the AFC in general. They have a very good defense headlined by Sauce Garner as well as some of those draft picks that they've got in the past few drafts that defensively the Jets drafted very well right but no matter who is at quarterback for the New York Jets whether it's Mike White or Aaron Rodgers or somebody else someone's got to protect him and I think for the New York Jets it makes a lot of sense if you grab yourself Peter Sikowski right now dude can flat out ball and he's one of the best tackles to come out so I'm gonna go with Peter Sikowski here of a tackle from Northwestern mocking him to the New York Jets for number 14 is another AFC North team, the New England Patriots. And while it's not listed, wide receiver could be a distinct need. But the two top flight wide receivers, Quinn Johnson and Jackson Smith and Jigma, they are both gone like girls in a country song. So for Convent, no man's laying in the, in the wide receiver position. They also could use some tackles. They also could use some edge rushers. And Lucas Van Ness is a little bit underrated with how Nolan Smith of Georgia was. But Lucas Van Ness ran a sub 4-6 in 
as a defensive lineman. Dude is a freak of nature, part of one of the best defenses in college football in the Iowa Hawkeyes. If they just had an average offense, they would have been a team that have been playing in a New Year's Six Bowl. Their defense was that good. Lucas Van Ness is a very big reason for that. So I see the New England Patriots get themselves an Iowa farm boy and get themselves Luca Van Ness. Now, at number 15 is the Green Bay Packers. And we alluded to the idea that Aaron Rodgers could very well be traded. Now, for the Green Bay Packers, whoever is playing quarterback, it's clear that they still need some weapons. I do like Christian Watson. I do like Romeo Dobbs as well. They eventually need that number one target. And if it really is the case that Jordan Love's going to take over at that quarterback position next season, then I think getting himself an additional weapon would really help that young quarterback, help in his evaluation, give him everything possible to be successful. And the best offensive weapon is Dalton Kincaid, who had nearly 1,000 yards in the Pac-12, part of a very good Utah Utes team. Dalton Kincaid to the Green Bay Packers, therefore, does make a lot of sense to me. However, with the Washington Commanders, though, they are picking at number 16 here in the NFL Draft. Could be a potential trade spot, though, but here in PFF, there's actually nobody that's really all that interested in training up for the number 16 pick, at least in this particular situation. So, for the Washington Commanders in this spot, I do think they go with the best available players still available, and I think that's Brian Branch, the safety from Alabama. They have a pretty good secondary there in Washington. That's why it's not listed as a need. But, you know, in spots like this, you know, drafting the best player available, not always the worst thing. You got to get town in the NFL, and you'll just figure it out later. This is one of those cases, and I'll see Brian Branch with the Washington Commanders at 16. Now, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, this one is certainly going to be a no-brainer for me we got joey porter jr as the best player available still on the board right now and his dad actually was a pittsburgh Steeler himself so like father like son you gotta get yourself a corner right i mean like i said earlier gotta find a way to guard those elite receivers particularly from the cincinnati Bengals. i think joey porter jr is going to be part of that equation so him to the Pittsburgh Steelers makes a ton of sense. Meanwhile, the Detroit Lions, they're picking at number 18. Also, their second first round pick here in the 2023 NFL Draft. And for the Detroit Lions, I see them. They got Devin Witherspoon. No, not Devin Witherspoon, but Christian. Uh, gosh, what is the name? I, I lost it. Christian Gonzalez. Uh, I don't know why that name was escaping me, but them they still need an interior defensive lineman i think brian breezy makes a lot of sense sure he does get swallowed occasionally in double teams and that's not ideal especially when you're an interior defensive lineman and that's really important in the running game a particular that run defense was questionable at times for the lions but for me brian breezy lots the reason why he got swallowed in double teams because of how his technique is and with it being a technique issue, that's certainly coachable. I think he's a very coachable kid. He obviously has the talent too. That's why he's in this particular position. So I think Dan Campbell, he's going to fall in love with Brian Breezy here and go with the 18th overall selection. Meanwhile, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are up next. They're at number 19. They fought about getting Brian Breezy, but straight up just got outbid. So again, I can see this being possibly a trade scenario because quarterback you're not getting a quarterback here uh tight end is a little bit too much of a reach for a michael Mayer. the offensive line are available in paris johnson jr and anton harrison they're both meant to be tackles you that's why i wouldn't go with the tampa bay buccaneers here and of course that interior defensive lineman the lions just got so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna look at some trade options dallas cowboys could certainly be an option and i think they'll actually would do this i see the dallas cowboys getting themselves somebody that they really like we'll toss in a third and a fifth round pick as well in order to go up seven spots so this is my first trade of this mock draft scenario and with the 19th pick 
in the NFL draft. I see them getting themselves a big time wide receiver. Could be a little bit controversial, but Zay Flowers would be a great compliment to have for somebody like CeeDee Lamb. And it gives Dak Prescott another weapon as well. So you can't go wrong with that. I'll see him going to the Dallas Cowboys. Meanwhile, the Seattle Seahawks are on net are up next and the Seattle Seahawks they may have gotten themselves a defensive lineman earlier but the Seahawks they need multiple defensive linemen they already got Jalen Carter but why not get yourself one of the best edge rushers that are still available Nolan Smith this dude can fly somebody who is sub 4-4 and is a defensive lineman he's going to be a problem for years to come and there's some good quarterbacks in that division as well we're talking about Matthew Stafford. We're also talking about what the 49ers got going on. Trey Lance is a mobile quarterback. That's very important as well. So in order to counter that, get yourself some Nolan Smith. I think this would make a lot of sense for the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, for the LA Chargers, the Chargers are up next at number 21. They are the actual 21st pick because the Miami Dolphins, they do forfeit their first round pick because they made some inappropriate phone calls. That's why that pick was vacated. For number pick number 21, they could go in multiple directions, but the Jacksonville, not Jacksonville, but the LA Chargers, they definitely did not look good in the playoffs against the Jacksonville Jaguars and part of that was because they got big chunk plays allowed in that passing game that allowed Trevor Lawrence to make that historic comeback in the AFC wildcard game and I think you start to address that issue because the better wide receivers are no longer on the board so I'm gonna go with Deontay Banks here at number 21 could go into the top 20 Deontay Banks but it'll meet that cornerback need for the Chargers Meanwhile, for the Baltimore Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens could uh, need quite a few things, but I see them going with some Miles Murphy here. Miles Murphy, a very uh, good football player. While he did not have a great 2022, he, the stuff that he did in 2021, I think, is why he's here in the first round. He did some great stuff in 2021. So, with the better wide receivers off the board, I will see them grab Miles Murphy here in the first round. After that is the Minnesota Vikings. They are up next. And Minnesota, also a team that could potentially trade at this point. They don't really need some tackles. Their receivers are obviously good um, because they got Justin Jefferson. He's a certified dude, of course. Bijan Robinson, they got Dalvin Cook, so they wouldn't do that. And then I'll think Michael Mayer wouldn't be a great fit for Minnesota necessarily so we'll go ahead and see what the trade options are available i don't see them trading with tampa bay because they just traded down with the dallas cowboys so that doesn't make a lot of sense however i couldn't see the cincinnati Bengals move up because there are some tackles that are certainly available right now and i'm gonna go with the same similar philosophy moving up five picks cincinnati Bengals will give up their 28th pick as well as their third round pick in the nfl draft in order to move up five spots and we know tackle is a really big need. And given how things have broken so far, Paris Johnson Jr. is still on the board. This would be a home run pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. That makes a lot of sense, which is why I have them moving up. They have made a couple more draft day trades here in the past couple of seasons. And I think there's going to be no exception here. Paris Johnson Jr. going to the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, they are looking for some DBs. They could use some pass coverage help. Interior offensive linemen would also be helpful, but that's not really available. Could the Philadelphia Eagles move to number 30? They possibly could, but they don't really need a wide receiver themselves because they did pick up Quinnen Johnson with their 10th overall pick. So in this case, I do see the Jacksonville Jaguars going for best available player. Could be Anton Harrison here at this point. He's not as raw as Broderick Jones, so that's why I have him a little bit higher. Uh, and I agree with PFF here. So, and if he can play uh, interior offensive lineman, great. But either way, get yourself some more depth on the offensive line. Can never have too many quality offensive line in the NFL. 
However, the New York Giants are up next at number 25. And as the recording of this video, they did commit to Daniel Jones. He got $40 million a year, which a little wild to me because it only had half a good season. But hey, whatever floats your boat, New York. They did also franchise tag Saquon Barkley. So Bijan Robinson would be off the table here. However, New York Giants needed a weapon. They do not have very good weapons outside of Saquon Barkley. And if you're going to invest that much in Daniel Jones, you got to find some young players in the draft that's going to help him be successful. And I think Jordan Addison, who did slip a little bit because he didn't test as good as maybe what you would expect at the NFL Combine, I think Jordan Addison makes a lot of sense here. Now, in pick number 26, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is how they traded down uh, with the Dallas Cowboys. And here, I think it makes a lot of sense now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to grab themselves Michael Mayer, get yourself an additional weapon, or whoever plays the quarterback position. Because at least in the first round, I don't see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going quarterback here given how the current draft board is broken as for the buffalo bills the buffalo bills are currently up next they are with the 27th overall selection here in the nfl draft and for the buffalo bills they are in the need of some some cornerback help maybe some interior offensive linemen but none of that is really there so i do think in this case they go with who's still considered the best player available in this case. That's Brogwick Jones. Uh, could also play interior offensive line possibly. But, you know, like I said before, can't have too many quality offensive line in the NFL draft. And for the Minnesota Vikings, this is where they traded down from it. While it didn't break out maybe the way that they necessarily wanted to, I do think the Minnesota Vikings, they do grab themselves a player a very good football player in will mcdonald the fourth who also did pretty good in the combine you know a lot of winners and losers in the combine obviously will mcdonald the fourth is one of them so i'll see the minnesota vikings grab him also a defensive lineman which is a need for the vikings but now number 29 comes up and number 29 is a very interesting spot for the saints the Saints, last time around, they in version number two, I had them take Tanner McKee. And not only did I have them take Tanner McKee, I had them trade up a few spots in order to accomplish that. And I took a little bit of heat of that in the comment section. But now here we are. We know that Derek Carr is now going to be a New Orleans Saint. And you're at a point now where quarterback could still be in need because Derek Carr might not be the long-term answer. He is 30-plus years old. That's something to really think about. However, that being said, though, I don't see the Saints going with a first-round pick. You spent that capital on Derek Carr. You don't proceed to do that and then bring in a first-round quarterback. So Tanner McKee is off the table. So interior defensive lineman or a corner makes a lot of sense. I think it's time to beef up that defensive line. And for the Saints, I'm going to have them grab Mozzie Smith. As for the Philadelphia Eagles, though, they, this is their second first round pick. And I know that Bijan Robinson has slid out of the first round at least just a little bit. They could go with DeLon Jones here, but DeLon Jones here, he's a right tackle. He, he is built to play tackle in the NFL. You are not kicking him inside. So this is going to be a little bit more of a luxury pick here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they're going to grab themselves Bijan Robinson, get themselves a top running back, and just really load up with those offensive weapons. Because why not? You can afford it. You have a very complete roster. And while you got some needs to address in free agency possibly with Jason Kelsey and you know others on the offensive line, Bijan Robinson's just too good to pass up, man. He is a straight baller. You got to get yourself some Bijan Robinson. And with the final pick in the first round of the NFL draft, this does belong to the Kansas City Chiefs. And guess who happens to be available? Josh Downs, the wide receiver for North Carolina, and that would make a ton of sense. The Kansas City Chiefs, their wide receiver room is definitely in flux. Juju Smith-Schuster, Smith 
he was considered our number one wide receiver, but he's in free agency. And, you know, I like Skyward more to a degree, but, you know, gotta get yourself some more weapons for Patrick Mahomes. He can't just throw it to Travis Kelsey all the time. So I think Josh Downs could be that great vertical weapon for Patrick Mahomes and Josh Downs. I can really see him be that final first round pick in the NFL draft. So guys, this is how my entire draft board is going to be looking here in version number three. Do you guys agree or do you disagree with my assessment of how things will go down here in the NFL draft? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. But in the meantime, if you appreciated my analysis, putting myself out here, here in this NFL draft season, I would really appreciate it if you smacked that like button. That would really help me out tremendously. And also, if you're brand new to the channel, not only do you enjoy mock drafts, obviously, but also you enjoy that college football gaming, this is the channel for you, man. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me so that we can go ahead and grow this community even further. But guys... I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I hope you enjoyed that. And with that, this is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. Hoping you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.